Welcome back to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning is going to, of course, uh, the Judiciary Staff Union of Nigeria who have called off their strike. It's been long enough. And uh, this morning we're speaking with uh, Mr. Justice Uwe, who is a human rights lawyer. Good morning. Thanks for joining us, sir. Good morning. Good morning. It is my pleasure once more. Thanks for joining us. Uh, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure courts, uh, you know, workers and, of course, Nigerians across the country would be celebrating uh, the end of this strike. Is it also something that you're happy about? Let's start with that. Your reaction to, you know, the decision to call off the strike. <laughs> well, actually, I am happy because um, uh, we've been at home for some time, did nothing. But in the other way around, it's still... Seems uh, we're having a bit of a technical glitch this morning. We'll try to get back with our guests, but yeah, he started off saying he's happy. You know, mm -hmm. no, no one likes to just be idle, you know, in as much as we say, oh, I wish I was chilling at home today at work. But when that situation, you know, comes, you, you find that, that that's really not what you want. Yeah. So people are happy, lawyers are happy to be back to the courts. But we need to get just exactly what this means for him and other lawyers across the country. It's the longest ever uh, court, longest ever strike by by judiciary workers in Nigeria. Actually, the longest we never industrial strike, 64 day old, the longest ever industrial action the Nigerian judiciary has ever seen. So we really need to get a feel of what lawyers you know really have to say about this. What role has you know the NLC played? If, if any, what role has the NBA played about this? Yeah. You know, what role has the government played? And, and beyond calling off the strike, the crux of the matter, why are they back to that strike in the first place? Yeah, have those, those issues you know, been yeah. resolved? So, yes. We spoke about a memorandum of, of uh, understanding a couple of days ago. Yes. Um, you know, there's also, you know, those who have been waiting for the, you know, the courts to be back in session so they can be either granted bail or at least have their cases, you know, uh, passed through yes. the process. Um, you know, and it's, it's taking too long, you know, to just keep waiting and waiting and waiting. Um, you know, for some of them, of course, are still behind bars, you know, hoping that their, you know, their cases will be heard. We've, we've spoken about the inadequacies that our judicial system has, you know, been dealing with yes. for a long time um, and why it takes so long for court cases to, um, you know, to finally be concluded. You know, you see a, court, a case running for three, four, five years, which is totally abnormal. Um, and then you now compound that with a strike that lasts for, you know, more than two months. So um, it is good news, you know, but like you said, you know, has the memorandum of understanding be fully complied with? Um, do we expect that in another four months, Juson will once again say, well, somebody reneged on their promises mm -hmm. uh, and we're going back to, you know, on strike. Yes. Uh, the governor of River State also is, you know, is pretty critical here. And of course, how is every state governor going to be, um, um, you know, playing his part, you know, with this understandings? Uh, Mr. Uwebo, welcome back. Thank you. All right, please go ahead. Yeah, what I'm trying to say is that um, for me, uh, I am not uh, too surprised that uh, uh, the judiciary went to strike, in as much as it has been the longest in our history. But uh, uh, moving away from that, the question we should be asking ourselves is that. Should the government always allow people or workers in the country to always embark on strike before they do the needful or before they do what they're supposed to do? As far as I'm concerned, it is neither here nor there. I will not even be surprised if by the next one month or two months thereabout, this will go or we back into another strike. Because signing an, a, 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 a memorandum or an agreement, it doesn't end here. Because we've discovered and seen in the country where so many memorandums of understanding and agreements signed by labor union and uh, government, we are not uh, we are not kept to. So in fact, it's a thing of worry because if at this point in time that judiciary can embark on strike for this length of time. And the, the government allowed it to linger to this time. I, I am surprised. I don't know where we are in this country. Mm. But Barista Uwebu, you, you mentioned that you will not be surprised if there's another strike in one month. Why, why would that be? Is it that the reasons why they, they, they went on strike in the first place have not been addressed regarding judicial autonomy? Well, it has been addressed, so to so, on paper. But in, in practical terms, has it been addressed? That's what I'm saying. That's to me is not only the issue. 
who would have expected, you know, that want to call body movement, who would have expected implementations of all those things. Even, should you wait until you sign certain things before people do the needful or before, before people do what they're supposed to do? And all the things, these things just means asking that some other people are asking. There are even that things that the government should ordinarily do. These things are even constitutional provisions that you don't need to embark on strike, but you don't need to make sense for government to do what they're supposed to do. That's what I'm trying to say. Now, you and I know that this is not the first time in the history of this country that agreements have been signed. Mm -hmm. Look at the ASU, for, for example. How many every time ASU is going to strike? Why? Because of the same thing. At the end of the day, agreements will be signed. At the end of the day, it will not be kept to. So why are we here? Why are we behaving this way? Oh, okay, so I need to ask you this Pushing question. Back and forth. So if, if, there's, if there seems to be a history of, you know, government and workers signing agreement on something and the government reneges or breaches that contract, why in this case, they just now wait for the practical implementation of the things they're asking for before calling off the strike? Well, you know, the truth is that the quality is high. If, if people are actually angry. And also with what is happening in Nigeria today. Okay, look at that. You can just take a, a, a visit to, to maybe um, to our correctional homes and all the rest. There are overnight cases every day. Go to correctional homes. You see that people are multiplying on daily basis and all the rest. So I, I believe uh, one of the reasons why this will have to do this is, okay. is even out of sympathy. Let me put it that way. They may not come out to tell people. But that's the truth. All right. Mm. Um, so, so cases are legal. Things have been kept undone. Okay. So, so how much you know does this ease uh, the judicial you know system and the whole process? You know, and um, which people should be celebrating the calling off of this strike? Every Nigerian should be celebrating because one way or the other, we are all involved. Because I'm involved. So directly or indirectly, we are all involved. If judiciary is not working, even you people there will still not be happy. You will be involved one way or the other. You'll be concerned. So every every person in the country should be celebrating. Because judiciary, of course, you know mm -hmm. that we say that the that judiciary is the last hope of the common man. So how will the common man get his hope if judiciary is is, is at home doing nothing? Oh well, um, you know, from so from, the, from the way it sounds, from the way it sounds, you know, and like you've said, you know, you know, one of the reasons why this strike may have been called up is because of the overheated uh, polity across the country, um, and um, you know, Jusson may have seen that they need to keep, you know, get things moving, you know, um, again. Um, are you worried, you know, about the partial implementation of the memorandum of understanding? Uh, do you think, and of course, like the uh, River State Governor, yes, on Wiki had already made his own views clear with regards to judicial autonomy and uh, the memorandum of understanding uh, um, on just on the strike. So are you worried that, you know, maybe not all state governments will go ahead with the implementation of this uh, MOU? Well, the truth is this. Um, <clears throat> the we unfortunately we are in a situation now where we play politics with everything one secondly and most importantly where the executive arm of the government has almost swallowed the two other arms of government you know thinking or feeling that both the legislature and the oh so, the truth. okay for me for me the way I see this whole thing, or the way I look at it, is that Jesu is not even supposed to go on strike in the first place. The two bodies that are supposed to be a check or a watchdog to the executive is the judiciary and the legislators. But because of politics, they are not even doing this. Because the, 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 it is the judiciary and the legislators. So, because what the governors have done and even the president is even an impeachable offense. The constitution provides, made the provision that an, an act has to be done. And you are not doing it. So why is judiciary and the state keep you quiet? Why must you resort to executive as if you are pregnant? Them? That is the problem here. If we're doing the needful, the problem is that our institutions are not working.
If our institutions are working, I don't think all these strikes will be necessary. The institution will come up and take up the lead. That is just the thing. Wow. You made a very strong statement there, saying the executive has swallowed the other arms of government. You know, beyond just soon, what do you think the government needs to do institutionally to, to, to check this? Because the executive, they know that if they allow the institutions to work, they will be neither here nor here. Do your job as the executive arm. And to also do their own. That is why there are checks and balances. And that is why it was provided ab initio that the three organs of, of government must work separately in order to avoid tyranny. But today, unfortunately, in this country, the three organs of government are not working separately. The executive has swallowed the two other acts of government as, as a result of politics. Because they always impose the people they want, both in judiciary and both in legislature, in order to play their piece. So it has become an issue of being who pays the piper, they tell the tone. Mm. That is just what is happening in Nigeria today. Okay, now let's also talk, you know, of the reasons, uh, you know, behind the strike. How much uh, does uh, judicial autonomy change or improve on our judicial system? You see, I'm, I, I, I have to make due to say this. Are we, are, we not, we, are we not even ashamed? Are we supposed to be talking about judicial autonomy at this stage in life? It's just like when we're talking about, about local government autonomy. Okay, are we also talking about legislative autonomy? In fact, let me tell you the truth. I, it, it, there seems to be a conspiracy now between even the legislators and the executive. Where are the legislators not even? Okay, look at look at it. Our house of our senators, our house of red members are here, and they kept quiet for over two months. And the, the judiciary is almost as on strike. What did they do? What have they done? Have they called anybody to order? The various House of Assemblies of the of the states. What have they done? They did not do anything. That is to tell you that the moment to begin to play selfish policies and continue these selfish policies we are playing, it can never all go well with this country. Hmm. There is no two ways about it. Okay, I, I so, want you. This is of uh, autonomy or no, I'm supposed to be saying this. Okay. Um, um, Barrister, we know that this strike really has been on for a while now, about two months. And you mentioned that uh, Jason probably ended the strike out of sympathy because there are lots of cases to attend to. So can you please give us a sense of what it might look like with judiciary workers having to deal with such a huge backlog of cases uh, once they resume? Well, the truth is this. I have to tell you the truth. The courts, um, I, I see the courts are going to be jam-packed, especially um, overnight cases. You know what I mean by overnight cases? Matters that are fresh that just came from the police station to the courts and others. I remember there are a lot of on the daily basis that goes on. And you only need the courts for giving interpretation to them and others. As I speak to you, everybody is hanging in the country. Once you have any issue with anybody now, no matter how little, the excuse they, they will give you is that the court is not working. And what do you do? Would you want to resort to self-help? And the answer is no. So that's why I think that it's going to affect everything. Remember that the only matter the judiciary is embarking on is not only in that matter. There are several matters that are there. The minor cases may be to come into and all the way. But nobody is doing that. Okay. So you see that one way or the other, Nigerians have been affected in one way or the other. So I immediately, I see by Monday, when they say by Monday 14th, the, 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 the culture has to be jacked all right, Barrister right. Justice Uwebu, we thank you very much for uh, sharing your thoughts on the suspension of the strike by Jason. Have a great day. All right. Uh, at least now, um, uh, Abu Kamalami can take people to court for using Twitter, um, you know, illegally. You know, if so you have VPNs on your phone, yeah. <laughs> you might be getting a knock on your door, right? You know, how, how many people, you know, have sent to... Sent to uh, uh, the courts and maybe to jail. We just we hope it won't get to that. All right. Anyway, we, we know that uh, there's a lot of talk about regional security, Amoteku, Ibubiago, and many others. So they might they might just be licensed to carry weapons and you know operate regionally to ensure security in their states and regions. And that's because the House of Reps are considering a bill to that effect. I will discuss that in detail after this break. <laughs>